Okay, we're back. Hey, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between a back fist and a jab, some of the, ad, uh, the advantages to one over the other. Uh, but first, I'd like to point out that when you're fighting with somebody, okay, and you're going to throw a back fist, most of the time what happens is you telegraph, either with your elbow or with your shoulder or with your feet. But something's happening that tells that fighter, whoa, back fist. Same thing with a jab. If jab, typically your elbow's got to come out more so the jab can come out. Or you're already having your hands here, which for a martial artist can be a dangerous thing because you're a little bit more exposed. Boxing, that's one thing because you don't got to worry about your lower body so much. But uh, as a fighter in martial arts, this can be a dangerous thing. So, so if you're fighting with that elbow already out, well, then that jab can come out nice and easy without a lot of telegraphing. But typically what happens is you're... You're here, or you're here, or however you are, and that elbow comes out before that jab. So you're seeing the shoulder and the elbow, and it's telegraphing the movement. I, I personally like, when I'm using a flicking setup, a flicking jab, flicking back fist, and I'm fighting a guy, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to get him set up for, for something tricky or whatever, or maybe I'm just trying to get his head and agitate him. The jab is okay, but I, I almost like to throw more of a back fist straight out instead of, instead of like the karate back fist. It's a, it's a jab because you're hitting with the, the front part of your hand in his face. Um, but but it's, it's more natural just to come right off that elbow right there than it is to bring that arm up and throw it in like a jab. So I find that it's, it's quicker and uh, easier to get that flicking motion if I let it come off with the elbow as opposed to come out off the shoulder like a jab. So this might be something that you might want to practice. Now here's a great little drill that you can do with your opponent or with your sparring partner. And, and it's basically tag. Uh, it works great for point fighters, but it actually is very applicable in contact fighting. It is Tyler and I will stand here and I'll get maybe three tries to try and score. And Tyler, all he can do is either get out of the way or block. So, so from here, I'm here, bing. I'm trying to score on him, bing. Bing. And, and, and then now it's his turn, and he can go on me. Good. Love it when I get hit. So, so that's a good little drill to work on. And then you can take it to the next level where you practice. He comes in with the hand, boom, boom. And you work some kind of counter drill off of it maybe. Uh, those are really good drills to practice, and uh, if it gets to where it's too easy to hit each other, create more space, make it more of a challenge. Um, but these are initial move drills, these are really good to do with uh, sparring partners. Uh, one more type of back fist or jab that I like to throw, I call it a hanging back fist or jab, and basically what I'm doing here is, instead of preloading and trying to score quick with that back fist, my hand is just trying to go to the face. These are like the cardboard drills. I call them the metal to magnet drills, where basically I pretend that this is just a big chunk of metal and that's a huge magnet. And if it got turned on, boom, the hand will go right to the magnet and stay there. I'm not trying to bring my hand back. I'm not trying to necessarily hit him with a hard fist. The goal is how fast can I get this hand to there? And I want to leave it there. I want to hang it, let it hang. Because what this is going to do is, it has lots of advantages to it, is if I leave it there, it forces him to react. And at that point, I can, as, I, as he reacts to it, because I've left it out there and I'm charging through him with it, is I can take this lead hand and come over the top. Or I can take his hand and come underneath. Or I can do whatever I want. I can come off of here and come right into here. Um, but the goal is, how much ground can you cover and how fast? And to leave it out there and force him to respond. So from here, I'm way the hell away from Tyler. But from here, bam! I'm right there with that second hand. So again, way back, cover as much gap as you can, challenge yourself. From here, bam! And come in with that second hand. You notice how what I'm doing is I'm leaving it out and I'm forcing him to respond. And now, if I don't have gloves on and I can get that shirt sleeve, that even works great for street. Uh, but the goal is, is basically over the top, boom, score with that next punch.
So it's not about how hard I can hit with that lead hand. It's about how fast can I get that lead hand in, how much domination can I have, how much force of reaction can I get. And then I can decide as I'm going in what I want to throw from there. Anyway, those are some ideas on uh, the different variations of back fist and jab. Enjoy.